Hello, this is Mrs. Lewis again with today's lesson on electrostatic interactions. Let's start with this cartoon. It says, never trust an atom. They make up everything. We know that different substances contain different kinds of atoms, and those different atoms give those substances different electrical properties. One very important electrical property is called electron affinity. We can think of that as how much does the atom love electrons? The more it loves electrons, the more it will be able to attract them. If two materials are rubbed together, the one that has atoms with the high electron affinity will capture the electrons and then it will become negatively charged. The electric force between two charged objects depends on the charge of the objects. If we have two objects with like charges, there's going to be a force of repulsion between them. And if we have two objects with opposite charges, there's going to be a force of attraction between them. The electric force does not have to touch the objects. It is a non-contact force. It can exert a force without touching the objects. We can apply Newton's third law to these situations. Remember, Newton's third law says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Let's think about that in this situation where we have two like charges. And those like charges are an object A and object B. Well, object A is going to exert a force of repulsion on object B. And object B is going to exert a force of repulsion, an equal and opposite repulsion force, on object A. The same situation applies when we have opposite charges. Here we have object C with a negative charge and object D with a positive charge. Well, object C is going to exert an attractive force on object D, and object D is going to exert an attractive force, an equal and opposite attractive force, on object C. There is also electrostatic interactions between a neutral object and a charged object. Here we can see a situation where we have a plastic golf club tube and it's been charged by rubbing it with animal fur so therefore it has a charge on it and when we bring that tube next to some pieces of paper that are neutral they will attract the paper. Suppose you walked into a room and you saw two balloons that were hanging from the ceiling in this situation. They were apart from each other, what would you conclude? Well, you'd probably say there was a repulsive force between them. And you would also say they must have the same charge. Suppose you walked into the room and you saw this situation. Two balloons hanging down in this formation where they were right next to each other. What would you conclude then? Well, you'd say there's probably an attractive interaction between them, and therefore, they must have opposite charges. The behavior of an object that's charged depends upon whether it is made of a conductive or a non-conductive material. Here's an example of a conductor, and here's an example of a non-conductor. When we bring a charged plastic golf club tube toward this metal sphere, which is a conductor, it's going to put charge into that metal sphere. And after a short period of time, that charge is going to get evenly distributed on that sphere. Insulators react to charged objects differently. When we bring a charged object near an insulator, at 
initially the charges in the insulator were evenly distributed with the minus charges and the positive charges evenly distributed. But when we bring a negatively charged rod here, what's going to happen is that the negative charge is going to move away from the rod and the positive charge is going to move toward it. It can't evenly distribute itself. Insulators can be used to keep electrons from escaping from charged objects. And the insulators are going to pre prevent the electrons from freely moving across the surface. If a charge is transferred to an insulator, it remains at the point of contact. Here's an example of some things that are conductors. Salt solutions are conductors, metals, the graphite that you have in your pencil, and your human body. Conductors are materials that let the electric current flow through it. It lets the electrons move right through it and evenly distribute itself. Here's some example of insulators. Styrofoam is an insulator, paper, rubber, and glass. An insulator is a material that does not let the electric current flow through it. The electrons cannot evenly distribute themselves. They stay right there at the point of contact. So here's some um, insulators right here. This chart shows us kind of the way that you can organize some, all materials by their increasing conductive ability. So as you're moving along this way, these materials are better and better conductors. So silver is a very good conductor. It lets the electrons move through it easily. And rubber, not so good. Rubber is an insulator. It doesn't let the electrons move through it.